ready for some L9 reaction. We are going to watch preseason 2021 and state of the game. LOL, please. League of Legends. And with beautiful Jessica Nem. On behalf of the league team. Let's go, guys. Hey, everyone. Stay hey. Blocked here on behalf of the league team. We have a lot to cover today, including really? our plans for preseason, challenges, and game modes. Wow. But first, let's talk about the state of the game. Overall, we're pretty Yo, thanks happy for the follow. with the state of league this season. Sorry. But before we get into the details, let's dive into a topic that's been pretty popular lately, which is new champion balance. When we look at the data, we actually see that new champions have been pretty balanced on release this year, with the exception of Dr. Mundo. What did that she said, say? There's more to help unbalanced or balanced? With the exception of Dr. Look at the data, we actually see that new champions have been pretty balanced on release this year. <laughs> nah, nah, they didn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> no, she didn't just say this. Guys. <laughs> I think my headset is broken. I swear to God. I just heard. Uh, wait, wait, wait. What did she say? When we look at the data, we actually see that new champions have been pretty balanced on release this year. Nah. Guys, I think my headset is broken. You know what's funny, guys? You know what I'm hearing? Nah, guys. You want, dude, if I tell you guys, you won't even believe. With the exception of Dr. Mundo. That said, I think it's actually just a mistake. There's more to healthy gameplay than just win rates. And we're still hearing that new champions feel unfair to play against. True. Particularly when it comes to complex abilities or overloaded kits. True. If we're being completely honest, we don't think our champions have overloaded kits overall. But. Nah, nah, guys. I'm. Nah, I'm not gonna watch this. I am not gonna watch this. What the fuck did you just say? Look, it's the first top comment. We don't think our chairman have overloaded kids. True, Vigo's weak. But what? that being said, there have been times when we've given new champions too many tools and had to pull back later to give them more clear weaknesses. For example, Samira's ability to dash to allies was removed because it provided too much safety. <laughs> Combined with her missile blocker, it made Z seeing her too difficult, especially since that's one of her main forms of counterplay. Another thing we consider when we hear our champion feels bad to play against is their intended complexity. We try to make a healthy mix of high, medium, and low complexity champions. In this way, whether you like mechanical skill expression, point and click simplicity, or something in between, there's a new- Did she say point and click pussy? This way, whether you like mechanical skill expression, point and click simplicity, or something- Some pussy? Is she saying point and click some pussy? What is she actually saying? In this way, whether you like mechanical skill expression, point and click simplicity or something oh simplicity wait it sounds like pussy to me what the fuck in this way whether you like mechanical skill expression point and click simplicity or uh, something simplicity between, okay there's okay. a new champion that interests you for example with vex we wanted to create a champion that was fairly easy to pick up and we're happy to see if she's hitting that mark but beyond just how complex a champion is to play there's also how difficult they are to understand we want new Guys, before we continue, I just wanted to let you guys know that she bought this couch because we are all so fucking stupid and still keep on buying the passes and the skins. We literally paid her the couch. I'm just saying. New champions to have unique gameplay, but you shouldn't need a wiki to know how to play with or against them. Learning counterplay is a skill test we do think is important. True. But knowing what a champ can or can't do shouldn't be a part of it. This clarity is something we haven't always hit the mark on especially with champions like Aphilios, who not only has a complex kit, but was also lacking UI clarity when he was released. I still have no idea how, how he works. I have no idea how he works. Designing new champions is a constant balance between making something that's- Why are they in Discord? GG, Blackie, and Neeks Miller? Exciting, has clear counterplay, and isn't confusing. We're still <laughs> trying to find that line, but we want to get to a spot where new champions aren't just numerically balanced, but that you all feel they're fair to play against. How can she stay so fucking... Uh, dude, how is she not laughing? How is she actually not laughing at this? Beyond new champion releases, this season we've seen a wide variety of picks in every role. We've also seen a healthy improvement in diversity of playstyles across roles, especially in jungle and top lane. Some of this is due to direct champion changes, such as the kit adjustments that enable picks like Jungle Darius, Brand, and Morgana, New items like I haven't seen and Jungle Brand again. Have also had a positive impact, especially in top lane where we're seeing a ton of champion diversity. And finally, I mean, we know that 
this woman is full of nonsense. Yeah, but like she's just reading, right? She isn't the one who actually writes this. I'm pretty sure, right? This such a big company. There's someone who just fucking writes it for her and she just, you know, just says it. But some champion classes have been struggling after the item system update and we've been Meow. working on some solutions to help them out. And this brings us to our plans for preseason. With that, I'm going to hand things off to Yeah, of course she's reading the script. We'll go more in depth on the but upcoming change. I'm sure she is not the one who, who wrote the script, obviously. Changes. Okay, preseason 21. Let's see, guys. Ooh. Hey, everyone. Hello. Jeremy. Sort of gameplay on League of Legends. League is like a house. Sometimes we need to do a big renovation to keep it working well. True. Like when we overhauled the item system. And sometimes <sighs> we just need to add some new furniture. For this year's preseason, we're sprucing things up with improvements to our existing systems, like items, runes, and the elemental. The room. house is broken. <laughs> Let's start with our plans. Yeah, for of items. course he's excited because you well, know some he gets money. classes have lots of build options. Instead of follow Dr. Bison. Still got others that don't feel like they've got a mythic or legendary that really speaks to them. So we're going to be adding some new items and tweaking some others. Ooh, new myth mythics. This will include two new mythic items. Oh, the first one is a support tank item. Perfect for champions that want to get aggressive and charge into the middle of a fight. When you immobilize really? an enemy champion, all nearby enemies will take increased damage from your team for a short period of time. What? A second. What? Wait, that sounds so broken. What? Jesus. This will include two new mythic items. It's Abyssal Mask, just fucking, just this hydrogen mode. The first one is a support tank item. Perfect for champions that want But it's Abyssal, Abyssal Mask only incre uh, increases magic damage, right? It's also, it's all sorts of damage. Get aggressive and charge into the middle of a fight. <laughs> when you immobilize an enemy champion, all nearby enemies will take increased damage from your team for a short period of time. Oh, if they're immobilized. So it's only a, a, a item for CC champions. So they show such a second new mythic item is built for mages who are looking for a little more survivability. It grants damage reduction that lingers for a few seconds after you get hit. And while oh. the protection holds, you'll also get ability haste. We think it'll be particularly good for longer range mages who need a mythic that helps them survive a dive rather than pile on. Okay, damage. interesting. That's good. When we updated, we're definitely going to try system, this on Kale. We wanted to give every champion strategic choices in every game. We still think that's the right goal for mythics, but our thinking has changed when it comes to legendary items. We think it's okay if some champions build the same legendary in most games, if it's a perfect fit. But we also want you to have plenty of options, which is why we're improving legendaries for mages, assassins, and tanks. For example, assassins can look forward to a new legendary item that gives ability haste, and also- Wow, a new legendary item which gives ability haste? Not like that. Every single legendary ability fucking uh, uh, assassin item already has at least 20 ability haste. Wow, guys. A new ability haste item. And you know what the passive is? Listen, if he kills someone, he gets 500 gold for free. Look at this, guys. Watch this. Assassins can look forward to a new legendary item that gives ability haste. And also refunds a portion of their ultimate's cooldown. With ah, that's even worse. What the fuck? Nah. Nice. So Zed has like, what, 20 second cooldown at level 3 with his haste? Nah. <laughs> it gives ability haste. Nice. And also refunds a portion of their ultimate's cooldown with enemy takedowns. Tanks that can never get enough mana will be happy with a new legendary item that grants bonus health based on total mana and also burn some of it to create a shield. Okay, that's cool for Sinch. That's actually, that's cool, that's cool. Finally, mages who are tired of being denied their hard-earned kills can rejoice. Serpent's Fang, please. They'll be receiving a new legendary that grants magic pen against recently shielded enemies. Yes, that's gonna be so good on Kale, Runes, guys. Oh my god. I think there are some good targeted changes we need to make. Let's go, that's Most good. Most of all, we feel the inspiration tree's identity has been pretty unclear. Ooh! Oh my god, guys, imagine, oh my god, imagine they say, oh my god, imagine, imagine, imagine they're saying Klepto's coming back. All right. We'd like to broaden its keystone use cases. For example, we're reworking Glacial Augment to double down on its fantasy of slowing down enemies. We are also making some modifications to Lethal Tempo to lean into its attack speed fantasy and give it a more distinct use case in the okay. first entry. Lethal Tempo Season 12, Kale back at it again? Oh my god, that sounds interesting. 
Up next are bounties. Champion bounties give teams who are behind a way to get back into the game without being a straight shot to victory. And this year, we're adding a second way for teams to try and make a comeback. Objective bounties will work like champion bounties. Objective bounties? Them in by taking map objectives, like towers or That's barren. cool. That's actually cool as fuck. Slowly when the enemy team lead grows, and the bounty is shared with your whole team, regardless of who claimed it. Okay, that's cool. Taking objectives really is the best way to come back when you're behind. So we want to help make that a clearer and more rewarding strategy. Oh, tall gold. That said, if a team is really far ahead, objective bounties won't change that. Being the better team should always get you a win. Yeah, so we'll true. we'll be watching the new bounty system closely to keep things in check. Ah, uh, there's going to be some Finally, broken stuff. let's talk about our biggest addition this preseason. Dragons. Huh? We really like how each dragon creates unique terrain, grants powerful buffs, and adds more strategy to the mid and late game. So this preseason, we're adding two more. Up for Two more dragons! Okay, what is gonna do this? What is this? Two dragons! Uh, I will never ever get fucking. No way. Electric dragon? And it's gonna be. Uh, what, what else? Is there like anything? It, what, what's, uh, what's another element? We have like water, we have like. We have like. Ice and electric? First is the Hextech Dragon. Hextech? What? When your team defeats it, you'll all gain additional ability haste and attack speed. Okay. That's the best dragon for Kale. Attack speed and haste? Jeez. That's good. Look at this fucking juicer. And if you claim the soul, you'll receive a chain slow that works kind of like static shift. Statics! When this dragon. Oh no, what is this? Dragon takes over the rift. It creates Hextech gates that can transport you to set locations across the map. What the fuck? <laughs> what? <laughs> Wait. In slow, that works kind of like Static Shiv's passive. Nah. When this dragon takes over the rift, it creates Hextech gates that can transport you to set locations across the map. Set locations? What does set location mean? Does it mean that we can choose where they where they will be put? Or is it like a specific, like... The fuck? The second dragon joining the... Okay, what is this? Grass? The weed dragon? This party is Hextech's darker sibling, the Chemtech Drake. Chemtech! You... Sheesh! It looks like Baron! It looks like Baron! Slay it, your team will deal increased damage when your HP is low, letting you turn around those close team fights. Ooh, that's cool. The okay. Yeah, I I'm pretty sure it's gonna be some form of poison, like dot damage when you get the soul. Wait, not only six dragons, but six different dragon souls. This dragon soul provides a second chance at life. Well, sort of. <laughs> when you die, you'll enter a zombie state. You can still abilities and continue fighting. We had this somewhere. We'd normally, be looking at a gray screen. Okay. And when the Chemtech Dragon putrefies the map, it creates camouflage zone. Wait, 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 wait. What? Wait, what did this say? Is this soul or is this just if you get one? When damage when your HP is low, letting you turn around those close team fights. This dragon soul provides okay, a soul. chance at life. Well, sort of. <laughs> When you die, you'll enter a zombie state. I like this. This is cool. Cast abilities and continue fighting. When you dude, we had this somewhere. Wasn't there like a event where we had this? Like where every time you just like um, you just spellbook. Was this in spellbook? Like there was something. When you die, you would just respawn at like time passive, right? You'd normally be looking at a wait. What happens with time passive? Wait. Wait, wait, if Cyan dies, does he get his passive first, and then the, the thing? Oh my god. Imagine. And then he gets Celian ulted for the fourth time. Yeesh! Green. And when the Chemtech Dragon putrefies the map, it creates Slow. camouflage zones and fixed locations. Nah, no, no, nah. Camouflage zones?! ...cities and continue fighting when you'd normally be looking at a gray screen. Uh, and when the Chemtech Dragon I, uh, this... the map, it creates camouflage zones and fixed locations. I do like this. These dragons might seem more impactful than the current ones. And, <clears throat> well, they are. Our goal is to add more unique encounters and meaningful strategy to the mid and late game. 
That said, these are some pretty big changes, and we're ready to adjust if they're making too much. I mean, too cool, guys. Impact. That's what I love about League of Legends. Doesn't matter what's broken, what's not. They actually add the stuff. If there's one thing they know how to do, it's just adding new stuff. Like, the game just never gets boring. They always, like, find a way to excite us. Even though some stuff might be, you know, not that great. But, dude, just seeing this stuff makes me just really want to play. Like, actually. You can expect to see all of these changes on PvE in a couple of weeks. And Ooh. we'll be looking for your feedback in the months ahead. Challenges? Oh, yeah, this, they talked about this, right? The more way of, like, getting stuff. Outside of preseason... Something we've heard from all of you is that you'd like more ways to express yourself and your achievements in League. For some of you, ranked is how you define your progress. True. And that's great. We don't want to change that. But for those of you who aren't focused on the rate climb, there aren't great ways to express your own progress. True. Champion Mastery and Eternals help you show off your skills uh, in a particular cha Oh my god, I just thought they would say there's new Champion Mastery, like Mastery 8 or Mastery 9, Mastery 10. Oh my god. Damn. But they don't tell the story of your broader league legacy. The new challenge up, system should achieve just that. Challenges rank up over time, Ooh. showcasing your increasing mastery and legacy across a bunch of. Yo! Wait, what's wrong with the client? What the fuck is that? Rons? What the fuck is going on? There's so much. Collection, expertise, teamwork, strategy, veterancy, collection. Deal more than Y damage per minute X time in R in ARAM? Okay, that's cool. Of different systems, modes, and gameplay, making it a little different than it's just ARAM. a standard achievement. We want to highlight not Okay, but guys. What is this? What is Rune King? Look, it says Rune King. Ooh, I think no one saw this. I'm the first one, guys. Sheesh. Rune King. Play making it a little different than just a standard achievement. We want to highlight not just your rank and champion master. Okay, that looks cool. That was actually fucking dope. How does Chandra look? But also your inventiveness, breadth of play styles, collection, Ooh, and everything else. It kind of just like shows what kind of player you are, right? Like, you know, if you like, like team fighting, if you like split pushing. In between. Jesus. Want to showcase your knack for never dying in ARAM? Or how great you are at killing minions in SR in the first 10 minutes? Nah, I don't want to have this. I'm bad at last hitting minions first 10 minutes. Dude, Kayla's not a champion to last it with. Maybe you've collected over 100 champions. Or love participating in events. All of this is now possible to track and display your progress with challenges. You'll get the first glimpse of challenges when they hit PBE next month. And the full system will okay. launch early next year. Wait, what? That's when? All next month. And the full system will launch early next year. Oh, wait, so they don't even bring it out? So it's gonna, like, come with, with, um, Season 12 start? That's all I, I have, have to cock? share with you today. Thanks so much for watching. And here's Safe Locked again to talk about game modes. Game modes? Okay! Now we talk. When it comes to game- Wait, but before we continue, I haven't heard anything about punishment system. I haven't heard anything about high elo. I haven't heard anything about- Dodging, I haven't heard anything about player behavior. I haven't heard anything about My mom, please come back game modes one thing we've been hearing from you all is that you'd like more variety in the modes We bring back alongside events. So let's talk about it To start we actually agree that the existing rotation of game modes can make some of the most popular modes like Earth and one for all feel a bit stale. Yeah, true. Some of you have asked why we just don't bring back some of our other older game modes like Star Guardian Invasion yes, or Ascension please. to mix things up. Oh my god. <gasps> Old Kale, you guys see this? Dude, I love these modes. They, these modes were so fucking good. Bring back some of our other older game modes like Star Guardian Invasion I love or Ascension these. to mix things up. Oh my and the God. answer is that bringing back old modes isn't as easy as flipping a switch. League is constantly changing, which means all of our existing modes require a constant upkeep. For the example, thrash game mode, we Dark Star? Yumi, we had to figure yeah. out how she'd function in one for all. What happens when a Yumi attaches to a Yumi who is attached to a Yumi? Because of upkeep like this, we have to be very selective about the modes we make. Oh, come on, you're the you're multi billion right now, there fucking company. Few popular modes that feel worth the investment compared to making brand new modes or updating more resident ones for you. Ascension, We've please. mentioned this before, but we think the sweet spot for game modes are ones that amplify champion fantasies and really build on what you love about your champs and summoner's rift. 
So moving forward, we're focusing on adding more game modes that hit this goal. And to that, let's talk about Ultimate Spellbook. First and foremost, you all seem to really love this one. It was one of our highest engagement modes ever. Yeah, it's fun, but come on. And beyond popularity, we're super happy with how long you spent making oversized champions with Cho'Gath Salt. And by that, we mean the total amount of time you spent in Ultimate Spellbook. I mean, like, it, it was fun, I agree. But I, I played, like, three games, and after that, it was just boring. Like, like, give us a new map. Like, actually, give us a new map. Why not a new map? New map with new game modes. Like, what's wrong with that? Like, you know, just... I don't know. ...stayed high throughout the event. That gives us confidence that it's worth keeping around. That said, there are some clear areas of feedback that we want to address. Junglers were forced to take Smite and another ultimate, which meant they couldn't choose another summoner spell. They also missed out on a lot of exciting plays during the laning phase because they were stuck clearing caps. Beyond that, we also heard that games started to feel a little repetitive due to the small number of available ultimates. True. And we agree. Three, so, three, yeah, this but... winter, we'll be bringing back Ultimate Spellbook with a bigger ult pool. Well, like, they, they talked, like, years ago, I remember, they talked about a one versus one map. Like, a fire-ish map, right? Do you guys, does anyone remember? Like, a 1v1 map? Why not this? I would love to play 1v1s. You know, you get, like, a certain, you know, you can just pick your champion and just play 1v1s. We'll also be Magma making some chamber, adjustments yeah. for junglers to ensure that your experience in Ultimate Spellbook is just as fun as everyone else's. If you'd like to learn more about our approach to game modes, you can check out the dev blog that's coming out today. Crucible, yeah. That's nice. all we have for today. Thank you so much for wow, watching. Okay. We hope you're enjoying Worlds as much as we are. And for any pros watching, once again, please pick a Moomoo. Okay. Well, I think most stuff is really cool. I think most stuff is really cool. But... I would have loved to see stuff that people actually care about. I didn't think I don't think anyone fucking cares about some stuff they've talked about. I mean there there's always people who care, right? But <clears throat> I would have loved to see, you know, like changes for high elo, for solo queue. I would have loved them to talk about you know, like, again, dodging system, player behavior. Um, I do, however, like some new items there. I think that's great. I think the biggest fucking change is the bounties. The bounties are really cool. And also the dragons. I think that's the best thing so far. Um, yeah. Other than that, I would say great video. Not bad.